One day, while driving down a random highway in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, I stumbled upon the town of Jeffrey City. There isn't much in Jeffrey. It's been largely abandoned since the 1980s. But, in the middle of this city you will find a unique treasure in an old gas station, occupied by a lone individual. The Potter, Byron Seeley. I'm here to share his story and give you a look into the unique life he lives, consumed by his craft. These gophers. So everybody's coming out here. There's a lot of people like to shoot, and there's a lot of people like to shoot gophers. So they, I think, pretty much shot up all the gophers, because I don't see many gophers out there, but they were like, where's the gophers? I want to go shoot gophers. So I started making my own gophers out of clay, and then uh, people can shoot a gopher. <laughs> And this one's waiting for whoever this is to come and get his gopher. And that one here, this one was shot with a potato gun. So a potato went right through there. And there's a random owl inside it. An owl? Yeah. It kind of looked like a potato, so... <laughs> Well, I'm Byron Seeley. I'm uh, the owner of Monking Bird Pottery. I've been here 11 years in Jeffrey City, Wyoming. Um, been, pot been doing pottery since 84. Did uh, um, 12 years production pottery and have been on my own ever since then. And uh, most people know me for taking multiple plays. I uh, throw four plays on the wheel, and then I trim the outside edge off, and the, uh, different layers uh, appear. And a lot of this stuff I've left it thick enough to dig into the side and scrape it out. And, um, that's what I call Red Canyon wear. It's all dishwasher, microwave, and oven safe. Um, unbelievably, the last four years I've been making these pots shooting them with a 22, and then putting another cylinder inside so they're still, they hold coffee. And um, just thought it was gonna be fun for uh, a day or two and end up being what people are buying more than any, especially during the hunting season. A lot of hunters like these. And they like these little guys, that, um, shot shot glasses. How'd you end up here in Wyoming? I was born here, uh, 69, and of uh, seven days I'll be 50. I've never been 50 before, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I uh, left uh, um, where I grew up in Big Piney. I left there in 88 and worked at Potteries in Austin and Taos, New Mexico. And then I moved back to Wyoming uh, after I was on my own, and um, pretty much I stayed back in Wyoming because of family, and um, the 
low cost of living compared. Uh, I actually paid less for this place than some people would pay in, say, Austin or Taos, and one year's worth of rent. And so it's lonely, but here I am because it's so much easier financially to um, not only get ahead, but at least not have to go behind backwards. <laughs> So this is what keeps me here. It's paid for, it's free. No more rent. So do you go into these like with an idea already or do you just kind of, does it just come? Yeah, I go you into know? it with the idea because I don't have any more of these. So that's what I make. And lately, I don't have any more of these and hunting season's coming. That's what I make. That's usually always the reason why I'm making something is because I'm low on those things. Do you just, uh, so when you shoot those, do you just like take them out back then? And yeah, take them out back. <laughs> nice. Sometimes I, well not sometimes, usually always, I put about three of them in a row and shoot them. Saves on bullets that way. <laughs> Good thing. Shoot them, turn them, shoot them, turn them, shoot them. Or any potter will tell you, it's impossible to tell you how long it takes to make one piece. What got you into pottery? Big Piney High School. Yeah? My art teacher. Thank you, Ruth Rawhauser. Are these uh, paintings other local artists? Or are these some of these? Do you yeah, paint? Uh, I uh, paint only the ones that don't look like anything at all. <laughs> That's what I painted this one up here. Oh, really? I call it Rabbit Rabbit, so to me it looks like something. I painted that one up there. I call it Casper the Not So Friendly Ghost. I quit drinking and I was not, I was drinking heavily through all the winters I spent here. Yeah. And now uh, sober, I am not, there's no way I'll be here. There's nobody here. There's nobody stops. There's no reason at all to be in Jefferson City as a potter. If you're a rancher, of course, you got to keep cows alive. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any cows, so I can just split. I'm going to be in uh, Portside, Arizona. Oh, really? Uh, around November 1st. A lot of what I do isn't really art, it's craft, it's uh, something I do and I know what I'm doing and I'm doing it again and again so I define it as, uh, you want to call it artsy craft or whatever you want to call it, everybody's different. But I call what mostly I do is craft and the more of it I make, the more chance that one of them is going to be like, oh wow, that's even better than ever. And if you make 20 of them, one or two of them are going to be better. So, if you're really super bored and lonely and nothing else to do besides make more pottery, you're going to get more of those special ones that, uh, wow, that one. So, I would have to probably say yes, as a um, pressure makes a diamond, I guess loneliness will make you do more work and get your mind off being lonely, I guess. Byron had lived out there with a painter, a man named Charles. This is a painting of his titled Utopia Road, about government social agenda. In his painting, people are promised a path to utopian society, where everyone is equal, only to be stripped naked and made to look the same, and be equal in their suffering. Charles had passed away on July 5, 2019, just two months prior to my visit. I can only imagine he was just as interesting as Byron, and he was clearly just as talented. Byron did have a friend to keep him company out there, a friend named Floyd, who has been by his side for the last two and a half years. 
turn off that high low. It's so bad at doing this morning. Oh, we ran out there. Floyd is the one responsible for the sign you read when you first enter no. Monking Bird Pottery. How long you had him? So I, I got Floyd, but he needs to run a lot, and yeah. he likes to chase bunnies, and I take him in the truck and we go chase bunnies, but we stay uh, in radius of this CB radio system, so I have the radio in my truck, and uh, people come in, and if they um, read the sign, and they make some noise to see if I'm here or not, and then they um, see that I'm not here, and they get on the radio and it's scared Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's a mess. But it's my mess. This is what it looks like when it's not... Hey, this is... The fun part's been done. This, the rest of this is a lot of scraping and sanding. It's, it's too wet right now, but I spent a lot of time just like this. And they're just clogging up my steel wool because it's got to dry. Yeah. Like the top part of this is getting dry. And so I can hit the top. And this is what separates, like, that's what a lot of people say. Well, I haven't seen much of this done this way. And I say, well, um, it's not, this is, it's a, it makes you, you, you find sore places. After one of them is fine, but then 20 more of them, you get tired of it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's why a lot of people don't do it, I think, is the sanding. Yeah. If I don't die from uh, uh, um, emphysema and or silicosis, uh, who knows what it will be, but that's most likely. So for me, it takes it would take courage to to get out there and do something, uh, this is the path of least resistance here, to go out to say someplace, I really want to go, uh, say, let's just pick, uh, let's say, uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, downtown, uh, Portland, Oregon, where I'm actually being, people coming in and checking it out, and the, um, to really work it hard and be able to, afford the space in a place where there's really, where you're paying um, $3,000 a month of rent or or going uh, in with a group of people so you can all, and uh, getting tangled up with all that mess of different people. And so, the, you, you know, something like that, it seems like it would take more courage. Yeah. This is, <laughs> it takes a different kind, it's different. It, the courage here is just dealing with being um, isolated, I guess. But it doesn't seem like courage is what it takes. It's like kind of laziness or, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like now that with my video stuff, isolation kind of helps sometimes with with the creative process. Like you said, it gives you time to focus. Right. Maybe uh, if uh, you are isolated, then getting isolated, but when it's constant, you know, when it's for, like more forced isolation, it's like this is it. <laughs> My break is the opposite of uh, other people's. Their break is from the city maybe and out and away, like say for you instance in the winds, it was probably very nice. My uh, break is from this isolation. And, and to go and since I don't do that very often it's kind of scary <laughs> so just driving a city is something I prefer someone else is doing <laughs> there he goes one of God's own prototypes a high powered mutant of some kind never even considered for mass production too weird to live and too rare to die